If you followed Skillcapped at all, then you will know of a certain person who works with us called Hector. It's no secret that our resident challenger player Hector is one of the most unique players in solo queue. He not only consistently plays Phil to top 50 challenger every season, but he has mechanics so questionable, it gives even the most iron of iron players hope that they can one day grow up and be just like Hector, a big brain challenger even if his fingers seem to have aged in dog years. Today, we sent Hector to commentate games at around Platinum Elo to show us how he completely obliterates players of similar skill that you're likely to face, with a simple rule he always follows in League of Legends that you will not have heard of before, the stop sign rule. Okay, well, if you drive, then you've heard of this rule, but why on earth are we talking about it in a League of Legends guide? Well, by far one of the biggest roadblocks preventing players from climbing is autopiloting. What do we mean by this? By definition, autopiloting is to act without conscious thought and usually occurs when doing something you've done many times before. So, hands up if you've ever hit a minion before. In just a few games, you'll get hundreds of CS. If you play a few games a day for a week, you'll get thousands of CS. It's safe to say that interacting with waves in general is a task everyone has done many times before, making it a serious hotspot for autopiloting. Let's take a quick look at an example. Here, we have Hector on Kale versus Garen. Garen wants to keep the wave neutral so he can go for extended trades. Let's find out if he's using his brain or if he's on autopilot. Okay, so let's see what it does. Okay, he's already made a mistake. When he auto attacked the wave, that makes no sense. So if he wants to play aggressive, how does he do that? Well, he keeps the wave in the middle of the lane so he can actually fight me, right? By hitting the wave more than he needs to, he's just pushing the wave into me quicker. Garen's mistake was not imagining a stop sign before he decided to hit the wave. If he had stopped to think, should I hit the wave here, Garen himself could have prompted conscious thought, allowing himself to identify that hitting the wave obviously doesn't follow his game plan. In driving, people have driven for thousands of hours and absolutely everyone is guilty of autopiloting when driving, just like hitting minion waves. Thankfully, with driving, there's a lot of guidance in the form of signs on the road that prompt conscious thought to keep you safe. The most notable of these signs is, of course, the stop sign. The stop sign instructs the driver to bring the car to a complete stop. With that stop, they can then gather information from their surroundings in order to make the best possible decision for when they should continue driving. Stop signs are strategically placed in hotspots where extreme caution is required. In League, there's no such system. You need to identify these hotspots yourself and self-enforce the process of stopping, looking, and thinking. Let's see how Hector implements the stop sign rule into his own play, and you can also participate in this process as we go along to get you practicing for the real thing, so buckle up. Oh, and by the way, we just created a brand new custom course specifically for this strategy at skillcap.com. It's there you can unlock an additional 8 site exclusive guides where our skillcap challenger experts Hector and McBays walk you through exactly how to implement this stop sign strategy in solo queue. Find out more along with the discount code at the end of this guide. Now back to the video. Here Hector's on Jax versus another Garen. Much like how you would have an end destination in mind on the road, you should also have an idea for how you think your top lane matchup should play out, even if it's just a very basic matchup plan as this will allow you to come up with a plan for how you want to manage the minion waves. Let's listen in. I just want extended trades, right? Like if, if a fight starts around here, I mean I can just chase the Garen down and uh, just outvalue him with lethal tempo and my passive. Like he cannot match the damage that I'm doing with that. Uh, but if the wave's around here, I can't really hit Garen that much. To summarize, Hector always wants to make sure that the wave is far out in the lane so he can chase Garen down, right? Knowing that will make it much easier to make later decisions. Let's watch what happens. As lane starts, Garen actively forces a fight onto him. Sadly for Garen, this is one of the big game-losing mistakes lower elo players make. They simply don't think about the matchup and what the other player wants to do. Garen is literally giving Hector exactly what he wants, an extended trade. Without Flash, Hector has no way to immediately kill Garen, so his enemy gets a small amount of respite before Jax gets level 2 to get Q. Unfortunately for Garen, he couldn't regenerate enough health during that small time window, and he's completely forced out of lane this time. It should go without saying that Hector has got a massive lead now, and just needs to make moves to guarantee his lead. And this is the type of hotspot you need to keep in mind for when you need to stop. There are certain moments that you should almost always stop to think about what you're doing before you make a mistake. Some examples of hotspots would be things like when you're warding and decide where you need vision the most, or after a recall to decide what lane you should go to, or as you hit a tower to decide how long you'll actually hit it for. 
Or in this case, anytime you force your opponent out of lane, you should have time to stop and look to think about how to proceed, since you don't really have much else going on. Early on, when you force people out of lane, the biggest punish you can do is setting up a freeze. That way, your opponent misses a ton of farm as they slowly make their way back to lane. Not only is a freeze good for punishing Garen here, but if you remember, it goes along perfectly with Hector's matchup goals this lane. He wants the wave closer to his side of the lane for extended trades. After the all-in, notice that instead of autopilot hitting the wave, Hector moves back and stops to think about what he's going to do. He arrives at a very unusual conclusion about this melee minion. What do you think he might do or not do in regards to the minion right now? I'm actually not going to last at this on purpose, and I know that sounds really stupid, but if I last hit that, those minions aggro onto me, and I think the wave might not freeze if I do that. Let's make something clear real quick. It isn't a hotspot every single time you hit a minion. It's only when doing so would drastically change the status of the wave. For example, if you converted a freeze into a push, or a slow push into a fast push by hitting the wave. Intentionally missing a last hit is not a decision a lot of players would make, and never in a million years could that decision be made when on autopilot. But it's all possible when just taking a moment and thinking about what's important. Hector already knew from the get-go that setting up a freeze is really valuable, which allowed him to make this decision after a bit of deliberation. This is the equivalent of making a dangerous left turn when you see a car incoming. You could take the risk and potentially make the left before it crashes into you, or you could just wait and let the car pass before turning. Likewise, there's a chance that walking up to score this last hit wouldn't break the freeze, but the risk of that happening wasn't worth it. The freeze is so good to extending his lead that giving up a single last hit is fine in the grand scheme of things. Just take a look at the lane state when Garen gets back from basing. Hector is already a full level ahead, with so much extra experience to get. It should go without saying that even without Shaco's help, this lane was already over. If this gank hadn't come through, he just waits for the wave to crash, gets level 4, and fights Garen with a 2 level lead. There isn't an emergency break strong enough in the world that would save Garen from that disastrous of a start. Moving on to our second example, we've got Hector on Jace. Now, there's a very important rule that every North American player should follow when playing Jace. Let's listen in. I am not the greatest Jace, I mean, I may as well be the living embodiment of NA Jace, but I think with good fundamentals, this is just not even going to be like hard. This is why Hector earns the big livable wage bucks here at Skill Capped. Making excuses beforehand about your mechanics on Jace is pivotal to prevent yourself from tilting when you inevitably look horrible on the champion. As the lane begins, Hector autos the wave once. This is a good habit to build in ranged versus melee matchups. During the first wave, all three melees will usually die at the same time. Auto attacking one of them once makes it so that you won't have to use a spell to score all the last hits as they get low. And saving your spell is obviously important so that you can actually harass your melee opponent. Okay, like I said, living embodiment of NA Jace. Ooh, my spacing there? Awful. But she's up. <laughs> We'll do everyone a favor and spare you from the million excuses he gives afterwards about why his mechanics are so bad, but right after the kill, this is a hotspot moment in regards to wave control. What would you do here to solidify your lead? You'll need to hold that thought while we watch what happens. Hector has to stop mid-thought as he realizes what he needs to do in this situation. So generally on the first wave, Aurelia can, you know, get her fully stacked passive by Hold on, let me explain in a second. I'm about to do something important here. I'm gonna run through the tower, tank these minions. I should have just let myself die. Dying is actually faster. Uh, I trolled. Dying is better there. I don't know why I lived. So that was a really great move Hector did, demonstrating his wave control knowledge that allows him to climb despite awful mechanics. The point of this move was to drag the incoming enemy wave to keep it from preventing his own wave from crashing into the tower. This allowed him to base with the wave pushing back into him. But he actually did this because he messed up his decision making. Going back, of course, no one could have predicted what Hector chose to do from this moment where we asked you what you would do. That's because he was autopiloting, trying to commentate, and didn't apply the stop sign rule. If he had, then he wouldn't have needed to use that tactic to correct his mistake. After getting a kill, it's obviously almost always best to either crash the wave or freeze to take a recall to spend your gold and heal up. The wave clearly can't be frozen from this position, so he needs to crash, right? This is where you need to stop for a moment and ask yourself, how do I make sure I can crash the wave from here? By literally looking left and right at oncoming traffic here, 
Hector could have realized that fast pushing probably doesn't get the wave in on time. If you answer that he should instead build a slow push here and wait for the next wave to fast push, then well done. Or if you came up with any other good solution, it's better than autopilot fast pushing like he did. If he hadn't been quick on his feet, the wave would have actually looked like this. Aurelia could easily get back to lane and pressure from this lane spot despite dying, and he could have easily lost his lead. Thankfully, Hector watched our advanced minion wave guide that teaches this great tip and many others to bring your wave control to the next level. Anyways, back to his efforts. Look at how the wave has formed when he gets back to lane. It's freezing towards him, which is obviously ideal. Uh, so right now is not a good time for Aurelia to roam, but it is a good time for me to roam, as long as I don't die. If, it, if I don't die here, we're chilling. Thanks to that prior wave control, he makes a move to help out his Lee Sin and even snipes away the blue buff. Not much later, the enemy Hecarim is complaining in all chat about top diff this game, which is always the main goal to achieve in any league game. After that Jace game putting his mechanics in the spotlight, Hector immediately goes back to another easy right click champion, Trindamir. Exactly like the two previous games, Hector literally just all ins his opponent at level 1 and scores a kill instantly. We may have to pull a U-turn on this guide and make it about how easy it is to kill everyone at level 1 in ELO instead of learning how to manage minion waves, especially after what comes next. Darius teleports back to lane and Hector just stands there baiting him with a recall. This is actually another hot spot for when you should stop and think about what to do. Players instinctively want to cancel their opponent's recalls, but it can often be beneficial to you to let your opponent base. In this case, if Darius just thought about it for a moment, he'd realize that recall was a bait. If Hector did go through with it, he could just freeze the wave and catch up on experience while Trindamir has to walk back to lane. The recall would be a massive mistake. Okay, he's dead. I'm actually gonna level, oh my god, how unlucky he turned around. <clears throat> I just wanted to bait him there, and I leveled W just so I could slow him, but he turned around the exact moment I pressed it, which is really annoying. Just like before, he's got a massive lead early into the game, but anyone can do that. Now, it's about making sure he keeps it so he can carry the game. Okay, so my Warwick is the top side of the map. Will, will, will he come to gank? I'm just going to set up some deep vision uh, while I can. Oh, we are not ganking. I mean, Darius is dead. Like, literally, he, he is dead right now, uh, if my Warwick just came, but uh, we can probably just be patient a bit. He'll eventually come, right? The next step to punishing your opponents is always to think about what their own goals should be and stop to think about things from their perspective. In this example, we'll be hearing Hector's real-time thoughts on what Darius should be thinking about and what his mistakes will be as a result from autopiloting. So he's getting a few auto attacks on me. What he is doing is pointless. So whenever he auto attacks me, it's fairly pointless. He should just be hitting the wave as much as he can to crash it. Because right now the wave's in a horrible spot for him. Like the f he's basically coin flipping the entire time that my Warwick isn't coming. He is actually quite lucky that my Warwick is just greeting uh, for these jungle camps. Normally, what Darius is doing isn't so bad, which is probably why he's autopiloting into doing so. But if he just stopped and thought for a moment, he'd realize why it's so bad. Why is the Trindamir that just killed him twice playing passively and keeping a freeze rather than pushing aggressively? He also hasn't seen Warwick in a while. These kinds of thoughts would immediately pop into your head if you just actively thought about the game. Uh, and I was kind of actually trying to bait him into hitting me because hitting me is kind of pointless as well. I just have so much sustain that it just doesn't matter if he hits me a few times. Same thing, I'm just letting him hit me, maintaining the wave here, I'm baiting him to not hit the wave. And now he is dead. Looking back, even if Trindamir didn't know if he could push the wave in or not, if he realized that he was under threat of a gank, he could at the very least play back into this brush and just try to soak experience at a safe distance. Instead, he just falls further and further behind, making the game impossible for himself right from the get-go. And if you want to take your laning to the next level, then you need our brand new custom course specifically made for this strategy at skillcap.com. It's there you can unlock an additional 8 site exclusive guides where our skill cap challenger experts Hector and McBays walk you through exactly how to implement this stop sign strategy in solo queue. That's not all though, with our brand new course page it's as simple as clicking top lane then selecting the laning category and just like that you have 6 courses with over 50 guides breaking down exactly how you can stomp your lane and climb the ladder. Best part? All of this is risk free with our rank improvement guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Head to skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Discount link in the description below. 
Alright guys, let's quickly recap. When you are met with a situation that is likely a hot spot, which is typically when you are going to do something that will have an influence over your goals, such as when to recall, when and where to ward, when to freeze, push, roam, always stop for a moment to consciously think about the best possible way you know of to achieve your current goals. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.